One thing we know from economic history is that convergence of national productivities doesn't always happen. For instance, in the years after 1950, there are only a few cases where nations have an average rate of growth of over 4.5% for up to three decades. Those would be some parts of southern Europe, right after World War II, the oil boom countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Libya, and Oman, and the East Asian tigers. In the other cases, it's harder to find sustained catch-up growth, including growth in productivity. Across different sectors, the rate of productivity catch-up varies. For instance, in India, in the paper pulp and paperboard industry, productivity is at only about 3% of the level in the United States. When it comes to the automobile sector, the productivity performance of India is much better. It's about 19% of that of the United States, or in relative terms, more than six times better than in the paper sector. In general, productivity convergence is relatively rapid in areas of machinery and equipment. Once a country establishes some kind of foothold in those sectors, it catches up in productivity pretty quickly. There's much less productivity convergence for sectors such as agriculture. So if your country is growing coffee beans, the chance that that agriculture will become as productive as that of the most productive nations over time is much smaller than with machinery and equipment. We see this in the numbers, but it's not clear why. Somehow it's easier to encapsulate the knowledge of the factory and ship it to another country than it is to encapsulate the knowledge out there in the field and use it somewhere else. If we look at many of the underperforming economies in Latin America and in Africa, part of the problem may be that those economies are partially stuck in sectors where catch-up gains in productivity are harder to achieve. That would mean agriculture and also services and those same economies are often relatively weak in manufacturing. It's perhaps also worrying that a lot of the structural changes in parts of Latin America and Africa over the last 20 to 25 years have been toward the directions of agriculture and services and away from manufacturing. If you look at Argentina, for instance, the sector with the largest relative loss in employment from 1990 to 2005 is manufacturing, and the sector experiencing the biggest employment gain is community, personal, and government services. Arguably, that spells trouble. Economists disagree on what these facts should mean and how they should be interpreted. Under one view, the greater convergence of productivity and manufacturing provides a case for some kind of industrial policy, that if the government of a nation were to encourage the resources of that nation to enter into manufacturing, that would mean bigger productivity gains in the future. The skeptics aren't so sure. They would say that those economies which have already achieved that initial foothold in manufacturing, they already have many good things going for them. They may have higher levels of trust or greater degree to centralize production, more innovation. And perhaps it's wrong to think that manufacturing is the engine of their success. Some initial foothold in manufacturing may actually be the symptom, and simply replicating the symptom won't get us very far toward reproducing the basic causes of success. This debate, of course, goes on. The analysis of this section has drawn upon the writings of Turkish economist Dany Roderick. For more information, Google Dany Roderick Economic Convergence or Dany Roderick Conditional Convergence.